So today I wanted to take a ride out to see some of the flood damage and how it's recovering. We're about, I think it's nine or ten days after uh, the floods that came through here. And it reminded me of a day I was out on the R1 and a tree almost fell on me. And I mean almost fell on me. And I managed to find that video, uh, so I wanted to plug that in here somewhere. But our area took a, some of the low-lying areas really took a hit. And I still have friends that live in this area. And so I, I feel for all the people that have this damage. And again, I, I said this many times. I lived in a flood area that was prone to flooding and basically the whole first half of my life. It's not I thought I'd start off the video with a concept sketch that John Pothia made with the silver wheels, the wheel silver and that little side panel, a matching blue. The only other piece, John, and I will do it in the future, of course, the little piece under the headlight blue, I think, and we got a, a good starting point. Now, you may remember, I always work with John and we always do sketches and we're trying to get a real head start on this because the uh, the bike, uh, work on bike season is, I know, it seems like it's forever. It's right around the corner. So thank you, John Pothia, for that concept sketch and, and all the concept sketches. He's been instrumental in, in doing all of these bikes. But we are starting to get ideas. We're putting together ideas for the MT-09. And there's nothing better than a lot of feedback from a lot of people. What, uh, you know. You, you're never at a loss when you, you look at a lot of different ideas before you make your decision. Now, I looked at so many ideas for the wheels on the GS before I actually committed to that. And am I glad I took my time, made a good, what I think is a good decision, because we're going to ride the GS today, and that's going to be one of the highlights of uh, my little photo shoots and stuff. Every time I take a picture, I look at the bike, and I, I love the way the wheels came out. So this winter, the plan is we want to uh, do a set of custom wheels. I'm not sure about this little piece that goes under the headlight, among other things that we might want to do, but we're already working on concept sketches. And every one of these bikes started with some concept sketches, and with John's help computerizing it, we've managed to put out some pretty nice paintwork. And as I always say, the two things that make a bike custom without destroying a bike or making it impossible to ride or some other way devaluing it. The paint, a nice custom paint job, or a highly polished stock paint job, and a set of custom wheels. That's always a winning combination. And I've always gotten feedback from other people before I've made decisions on things like this. And one of the main people I lean on, John Pothier, of course, and my wife, Karen, who's a trained artist. And every one of these bikes all the restoration, all the paintwork, all the stenciling, the wheels, the paint, even actually when it comes down to mixing custom paint, which we did for this bike, it's all out on our channel. You put my name in quotation marks and in the subject. And in this case, say you put in gold wheels, all the videos for doing these wheels will come up. But today I want to pre-flight and prep up the GS because we have another great riding day. And I really never ride a bike without checking the air in the tires and adjusting it if necessary. And sometimes you're down a pound or two, and I want to be right where I want to be. For this is where the curvy girls come in so handy, because I do like to check the air every time I ride the bike, and I do like to adjust it for the conditions. Okay, guys, who's hungry this morning? Who will take that food right out of my hand, just like a magician? Now one of the reasons I really like to take care of the bike and try to keep it from getting to be a rust bucket and a, have issues that I can't fix after a while, it to me it's really worth it for a lot of reasons, but one is you just can't go buy another one. It's impossible. Now we're all pre-fried and cleaned up. Another cup of coffee and finishing up the farm work and see how Karen's harvest is coming and we'll be ready for the open road. And this will be the second day we're working with these steel brake lines and we got I think about 110 miles I have to check but they are working great. That was such a nice upgrade. And it's all on a, the installation is all on a previous video for anybody interested. And it's pretty typical of, uh, of most bikes. 
That's been a great summer for Karen's garden. She gets a harvest every day. It has really been a ton of fun. We have fresh cut flowers every day and just all bucket full of tomatoes and zucchini and whatever. And every day, every day, it just couldn't be any better here on a farm. Now some people don't know one of Karen's uh, hobbies, just like my hobbies are working on motorcycles. She likes to do thing a thing called tablescapes. And so our kids are coming over tonight for supper and she's got a, a totally home-cooked meal. It should be a lot of fun. But right now I want to get out on the open road. And we are finally ready. Sometimes you think it's going to go on forever, but then it's time. Because of all the rain in the whole area, all of the lakes and ponds, this by the way is a, I call it duckweed pond. This is a pond that's about two feet higher than it normally is. And everywhere we go, there's, there's rugs out on the street from all the rain. Now I normally just take Route 80, but uh, today I decided to take the back road. And it was pretty eye-opening to see some of the, the, I guess this guy's getting ready for the Oh, well, you never know what you're going to see here out on a ride. Everywhere we go, there's still puddles and flooded areas, and looks like this guy's all prepared for the next flood. It's Noah's Ark here. Very cool. Cool boat. There's some of the rivers in this area, and especially right around the Lincoln Park area. Wow. They are right up to the road. Now, what I tried to do is I tried to take all the back roads today instead of taking Route 80 out to the riding area, and oh, it's pretty depressing seeing all the damage. And it's been, oh man, it's uh, almost two weeks since that storm went through, and we still have high water. Something you hate to see when you're trying to plan out a, uh, a nice ride. There's still a lot of roads closed here. Amazing. This, this, I didn't realize there was this much damage. And the river here is just what? That's about as high as I've ever seen it. And still there's a lot of roads closed in the area. It's gonna be challenging to get a decent ride today. Now I'm shooting this for Reuben McBride and uh, Rich Peabody, all the people that used to be part of the Circle Burner Club. Actually, Thomas Luciano knows where this field is. This was the Garden State Circle Burner model airplane flying field and basically a lake right now and we're about again 10 days after this storm oh, maybe two weeks even I don't know the exact date but what everywhere I go now when I get out of this area the roads are a whole lot better but we're in, still in the uh, on the way out to the riding area it's pretty depressing really sad really sad to see all this damage This is the uh, the golf course on the way out to the riding area. Man, alive! This is, see, I usually take Route 80, so I never see this. I'm seeing it now. Wow, what a lot of flooding areas here. That used to be a, used to be a golf course. I don't see anybody playing golf today. What? You never know how lucky you are to live on a, a high area where it doesn't flood. Now I lived the whole first half of my life in a flood zone, so I know all about this. Now, I guess the only good side of this whole thing is uh, if you're a heron, some of the fish come up from the Passaic River and you can get some free lunch. Now, this is not a lake. This is the parking lot. But the church's parking lot is really underwater here. Now, look at the reflection of the church in the building. Holy mackerel. What a mess. I took a picture of this on the way back a couple days ago. I thought it would be all drained out by now. Not a chance. Anyway, we're going to be leaving here and try to get off up on a higher ground. Oh, look right out there. I just saw. Wow, there's a heron out there. You can see his reflection in the water. Very cool.
cool. There he is. Mr. Harry. Now you can see the detour signs here. And, and before we actually get out of this low-lying area, we got detoured through all kind of back roads and uh, places that I normally never ride. But when you see those orange detour signs and you, they, they take you off the main road, doesn't make your day any better. And here we are, more detour signs. Well, we're finally leaving the low-lying areas and heading up to where uh, it's a little hillier, a little less prone to flood. And I'm sure from this point on, we'll have a really nice ride. But that was pretty eye-opening going the back way through Lincoln Park and through that area that's very prone to flood. I really feel sorry for those people. Like I said, I do live, I did live in a flood zone half of my life. So this was day two of actually testing the steel brake lines on the GS and it was quite a nice upgrade. I'm getting very comfortable with the lever feel and I know I'm going to get a set of rotors very soon. Upgrade again. Well, once we got the drier ground, the only limitation to today's ride is that we still don't have a way of mounting our radar detector and our tank bag to this motorcycle. And boy, that that is a harder job than you think it is until you actually go to try to do it. It's difficult. Now here's something that can really ruin your whole day, and I saw this in real life on my R1. I probably still have the pictures of that somewhere. Look at this tree that obviously on the back road, if that came down while you were riding by. Now, with my R1, I was riding down a road one day in, uh, in Harriman Park, turned around at the end of the road, and there was a tree completely across the thing. I do have pictures of it somewhere try to find those pictures but can you imagine that tree coming down that is tree parts all over the road i don't know if that's storm related or not because we're up in the high grounds now we're not in the area that's prone to flood now i searched through the computer for the pictures of this tree that almost almost killed me on the r1 to be honest this was absolutely true i went down the road it's right off tiarati circle there was nothing going on. Turned around at the end, and two minutes later, I came around a corner, and luckily the R1 has some really, really good brakes. See that tree across the road? And it didn't miss me by much. That, I'm telling you, I didn't see it fall, but it wasn't there less than a minute earlier. And this is when the, uh, the R1 was new. Okay, okay this, this morning, morning I, I take, take a, a quick, quick ride up 106. Up and, uh, of course, you come around a blind corner, and look what's in the road. Now, anybody coming up 106 knows this is not really, uh, you probably wouldn't be going super fast here. But you're going fast enough that that tree could ruin your whole day. So, I'm going to post this up. Anybody running up on 106 today? 
don't do don't don't go around blind corners and this is really a blind corner if you look boy oh boy now that must have just happened and I'll run up and uh, report it to the ranger so maybe we could avoid some accidents here block off the road anyway we're on 106 yeah, in fact, here comes another call. Look at this. They're coming up, and you don't see this till you really get there. Really is dangerous. dry roads up this area but boy down in the lowlands not so much really feel sorry again I say it over and over again that is terrible Everybody has one of these knows this was the drag race engine of the century and one of the reasons it is it's such a bulletproof engine and has a great solid transmission and clutch and it just takes a licking and keeps on ticking it is really a good good old lily lake is almost up to the road they got a lot of a lot of rain up here. Amazing how some areas are perfectly dry and some are really, really took a beating for it. It's amazing. Now, I've had a lot of different tires on this bike in the 40 years that I've owned it, and by far, the Michelin Commanders that are on it now are the best that I've been able to find, especially the front one. The front one makes a big difference. like here when we get to the farm part of the ride where the farms are they didn't get much damage at all because I guess there's there's more open area to absorb the rain I don't know but way better than down in uh, the Lincoln Park area boy oh boy nice features of this bike is it does get relatively good mileage it's usually in the low to mid 40s 40 mile per gallon unlike uh we won't mention the rd for uh the king of stopping at gas stations this bike gets good mileage Next little project is going to be to replace the back 40-year-old rubber brake line. And I hope I've inspired other people to have these really old 30 and 40-year-old rubber brake lines. Uh, believe me, that was one of the best investments I ever made just from a safety point of view. On my channel, I usually spend the better part of the winter months when it's really uh, you know, almost impossible to ride if there's snow on the road, doing things like these custom wheels. And every time I look at them all summer, I'm glad I did it.
Now, not only the engine, but the forks and the shocks on this bike have over 72,000 miles. I think it's over 73 now. And the bike still rides like a Cadillac. It really has a good ride. Well, we now have over 200 miles on that modification to steel brake lines. Again, thank you, Joe Padula. It worked better than I could have ever imagined, and, and I will do the back one very soon. And it's time to head home to Karen and the farm and see what's going Well, we did have a really nice ride and uh, sad to see that flood damage on the way out there, but that's, when you live in a flood zone, it's really, uh, it's a tough thing. Anyway, hope you did enjoy the video and thanks so much for watching. Now, if you're new to the channel, I hope you enjoyed the little presentation. We work on bikes all winter long and ride them probably nine months out of the year, every day, almost every day. And we do try to share a new video every day or almost every day, depending on if family things get in the way. But the whole purpose of it is to enjoy and share our passion for the world of motorcycling, all motorcycles, even the two strokes, even the older ones, even the antique ones, even the custom ones with the custom wheels. So once again, thanks for watching. We'll post something new tomorrow, and we hope we'll see you then.